For 60 years, the NATO Defense College has been educating officers, civilian officials and diplomats for key functions within NATO and related to NATO. In 1951, its founding father, General Eisenhower, envisioned an institution that would foster a strategic level exchange on political and military matters. Lieutenant General Wolf-Dieter Löser is the current commander of the college. He had also in mind uh, to contribute uh, to the integration of the alliance, uh, to the also the human interoperability factor of all uh, the participants uh, coming from uh, different uh, countries. The idea of enhancing human interoperability, which is to empower people from diverse cultures and backgrounds to work together, is at the heart of everything the college does. Established in Paris and later moved to Rome, its mission has always been based on three pillars. Education, research and outreach. The education division conducts several strategic level courses, the most prestigious and longest being the senior course, which lasts five and a half months. The research division develops objective policy relevant publications. Outreach activities include inviting students cooperating with universities and national defense academies and of course to the partnering uh, with other uh, organizations uh, in the world uh, like the Mediterranean Dialogue, North African countries or the Gulf states or even more because of the uh, missions in Afghanistan with countries in Asia like uh, Japan, Australia um, and, and so on. To stay relevant, the college has had to constantly change and adapt, which can best be seen in the senior course. The composition of the course members changed a lot over the years. We started with a few countries in NATO in 51, and we are now, in this course for instance, we are having people from 32 countries, not only from NATO, but from other areas. In the early years, the focus was on Cold War challenges and military issues directly on the border of NATO countries. Today's security challenges call for a much broader focus. The dimension of all these problems is wider than it was ever before. So it's uh, not only military, the security dimension, but more uh, than ever it has an, an economic but also a cultural uh, dimension. And uh, so if you see, for instance, what we have to face in, in Afghanistan, uh, what we see in the developing crisis uh, in the Mediterranean, in, in the Middle East, there are many more dimensions uh, that uh, are necessary to take into account to solve uh, these uh, challenges. There are today more than 7,000 alumni from the senior course and over 100 from the Middle East course. As was the intention 60 years ago, many of them have gone on to take important positions. All have contributed to understanding the different perspectives of partner nations. We talk about, for instance, cultural differences, uh, prejudices and misperceptions. And then it's very important the work in the committee, and that is key, that we try really to educate them to, and to bring them to build consensus. And consensus is a basic principle for NATO, of course, so has to be achieved also in committees with people from partner countries. So they have to agree, even though they are coming from different uh, directions, perhaps, and edu educational backgrounds, they have to agree on, on certain issues. Finally, one of the biggest advantages of this relatively young institution in Rome is that it serves as a testbed for ideas, helping also to transform and develop the alliance as it moves forward. In an academic environment, I mean, you can bring the people together, you can say what you think under Chatham House rules, and uh, it's not a political podium or arena. So, for instance, when we bring together here, the people from Arab countries and Israel and NATO countries, they can really openly discuss issues and we can see in what direction these partnerships can develop. For the NATO Channel, I'm Mike Mühlberger, reporting from Rome.